Hello guys, my name is Evans and uh, welcome to this uh, video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to start looking at the uh, February March 2016 um, ICT Paper 3 exam. And uh, in this tutorial, um, I'm going to take a dive uh, into web authoring and um, data analysis. And, um, and then in the coming videos, we will start looking at the October November for the 2016 exams. I was checking today uh, on the CIE uh, teacher support website and I've seen that they have now uploaded um, the files for uh, and the question papers and mark schemes and everything. So it should be available for the October November exam for 2016. So if you guys want to practice, uh, those of you that are preparing for the March uh, exam, you can start already to practice for that. Uh, nevertheless, in this video, we'll just take a dive into um, web authoring and then in consequence videos will get to data analysis all right so let's get started um, I did download the files that I need um, um, for this paper they are already on my desktop okay so I have my question paper and the source files um, so get into the question paper um, task one evidence document one um, open the file m16 evidence.rtf and make sure that your name um, center number and content number will appear on every page of your evidence document by placing these details in the header. And so save this as a word uh, process document in your work area with the file name M16 evidence followed by your candidate number, for example, M16 evidence 9999. Okay. And you're going to need screenshots and answers. Uh, to, you are going to place screenshots rather and answers uh, to questions in this evidence document. Okay. So let's go ahead and um, do something about those that file. Okay, so mm, okay, so there we go. So the file in question is this one. So just open it and um, let's put our details in the header and footer. So inside the header, so about that inside the header, I'm going to put this. So here we're going to search Casa Evans and then ZM556 and and say zero 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 one okay so we're going to save this as a word document so save us in the current folder change here to word document format and give it your name it was supposed to be m16 uh, evidence then at the end just add your candidate number okay and click on save so allow to upgrade okay that's perfect um, task two uh, web page you work for uh, Hot House Design and would develop web pages for uh, Cancelum. I don't know if it's Cancelum uh, properties in Goa. Uh, many of the people who live, um, or who view, who view the web page have very slow internet, uh, internet connection. So efficient markup must be used. Okay, so I'll come back again to this. Um, so in now is where they're saying that um, when you program or when you write your website or uh, when you create your web page, you must make sure that you use methods that are going to allow, even for the people who have got slow internet, to actually access your web page in um, in minimal time. Uh, they shouldn't be struggling to load the web pages. There are ways that you can do uh, that you can code uh, to actually allow the in the pages. For example, when you're loading images, so that these images can be loaded uh, quicker, as opposed to uh, waiting for graphics to be loaded on one page when you try to load that web page. Okay, so um, step one says. Create a new folder called um, um, m16 underscore HTML. Um, so in that same place here, I'm going to create a new folder. Um, I'm going to call this folder as, okay, let me just move this a bit down. So I'm going to call it as m16 underscore HTML. Okay. And then once this folder is created, one of the things that we're supposed to do is to locate the files and place them uh, in the folder that we just created. So these are the files that we need to locate uh, from m16bg, uh, which is background, uh, dot, uh, jpg, uh, to all the way to m16css.css uh, file. Okay, so um, go ahead and just select the files in question um, and load them. Um, and just put them in this folder okay so i just dragged and dropped them in the other folder okay so that is task two and um in this part now we're going to create uh, the table um 
um, we say create a web page called m16cp.htm and this web page must work in all browsers and we'll have a table structure as shown here so this is the table that we're supposed to show so the most important parts on this table are the width you're supposed to know the exact width uh, from this point to this point and as you can see this is about just about 900 um, pixels or so and if you're going down there you take the maximum size that you have which is a 1000 plus 80 so it's about 1080 pixels going down there so but the most important one that we're supposed to put up here is um, um, 900 um, and because the other ones will be sums of the uh, the heights from here to there from here to there from there to there and all of them should add up to about 1080 okay so let's go ahead and open our um, our web editing uh, package um, in my case I'm using front page so I'm just gonna open up front page and um, say go ahead and save this web page because we are told that we're supposed to create a page and give it a name m16 this one so I'm just gonna copy this okay and um, go ahead and paste it um, so click on save because I'm saving this for the first time so it will allow me to as though I'm saving us so don't worry uh, but you need to browse and go to the location where your files are uh, supposed to be so March 2016 paper 3 and supposed to be in this folder and the name of the file is actually that one so go ahead and save okay so I'm going to delete this I don't need this for now I want just to have a blank HTML page so let's go ahead and uh, create the table now so the table should have the structure like this so what you should do is to find out how many rows is this table having so you count the maximum number of rows that you have in the table so in this case I have one two three four five six rows and then you count the maximum number of columns that you have we have one two three columns okay so this is you're going to create a table of the dimension uh, six by three okay so let's go ahead and um, go to table and insert table and let the dimension be six rows and three columns okay so other features that you're supposed to um, to change here are the width of the table uh, remember uh, the width of the table we are told that is supposed to be 900 so I can go ahead and change the width of the uh, of this table space fight is supposed to be in pixels please don't change when it's 900 percent you I mean in percentage you change it to 900 percent and it's gonna be very big okay so just go ahead and do that and say okay so the table has been inserted and you can see this is in uh, uh, code view so you change it to design view and you see that the table is actually inserted like that okay so the next thing that you're supposed to do is um, to uh, put the dimensions of these tables as they are so I'll start with um, um, the merging of the cells so identify cells that have been merged um, for example cell A and cell B and cell K have been merged so we, let's go ahead and merge these cells as well um, this cell right click and merge then this cell right click and merge and lastly this cell right click and merge okay so the next thing that you're supposed to do is to now give the dimensions to these cells so the first one A is 300 by 1000 pixels so go ahead and select this one go to cell properties and specify the width this is supposed to be 300 by the height which is supposed to be 1000 okay and just say apply so you automatically see that uh, other cells have uh, somewhat adjusted on their own but don't worry as long as each cell you've given it the property that has been indicated it doesn't matter okay so let's go back here the next one is 600 by 200 so this cell is supposed to be um, cell property uh, specify width and height we specify 600 uh, the width in pixel and then specify the height in pixel as well as 200 okay so don't worry as well it doesn't look like it's 600 by 200 but don't worry it will take shape as we progress the next one is um, 300 by 300 okay so because these two they are actually the same I'm gonna deal with them at the same time so instead of selecting one at a go they have the same properties so just right click and say sell properties select both of them of course and um, these are 300 by 300 so this will be actually simple to do okay so go back again and you notice also these two as well they have got the same properties so you can select them 
both from the same so um, cell property and these are going to be 300 by 100 so 300 by 100 and apply okay the next um, cell is 300 by 300 and the next one is 300 by 100 and the last one is 300 rather 900 by 80 so we can go ahead and do that so just so select this one this is supposed to be the 300 by 300 not 3000 300 and 300 okay then this one is supposed to be the same as the other one so we could have selected all the four um, because we have four uh, cells that have got the same properties so we could have selected all four at a go um, but um, that's still fine so three this is 300 by 100 and apply like that then the last one is actually 900 by uh, 80 so specify the width and the height this is 900 and this is 80 okay so we are done with um, this section we uh, we were told that um, um, each table cell is identified with a letter and all dimensions are in pixels the letter shown in the table must not appear in your final web page and um, table borders must not also appear on the final web page so please take it easy here because you, one of the temptations that you may have is um, to start changing the table borders from here um, because they have said the table borders should not appear okay sometimes uh, you remember there are two properties or two places where you can change um, the properties of the table you can change the table properties um, um, just by by going uh, for example on uh, right click on the table and go to table properties and change the border here to zero okay and that is going to be perfectly fine but uh, there are also instances where you are required to change the properties of the table from the style sheet so you need to be very careful that um, you analyze first of all the style sheet that you're going to be given if at all they have not been uh, you've not been told to change the properties of the table from the style sheet then that's when you can go ahead and change the um, the table uh, properties from this uh, from this table properties window okay otherwise uh, as it is we're going to take it easy we're not going to change anything on the tables properties here until we had been told and until we encounter the um we encounter the um the style sheet and evaluate the style sheet have a look at it uh, perhaps in the style sheet we can be told to change the table properties uh, from there okay so i hope that is clear guys and uh, what i'm going to do is to pause this video here uh, like I said, um, this video is going to be very short, so I'll try to pause this video here, and then I'll continue in the next video uh, on step number two. All right, so I'll see you in the next video in a short while.